Hi everyone, David Aragona and Craig Molkowski here taking a look at one of the stakes races on Saturday at Woodbine. Craig and Ogre we were talking about this a little bit prior. Woodbine's put on a pretty nice card this Saturday, and one of the more interesting races is this eighth, the Grade 2 Nassau Stakes, going the one-turn mile on their turf course. A field of 11 fillies and mares signed on, and Craig, this is a pretty competitive affair. It is. Uh, this was a, a tough one to actually really narrow down all the contenders that we're going to talk about today. But for grade two, this is a, a pretty solid race we're getting from Woodbine. Yeah, we have a few runners shipping up from the United States, uh, from circuits like New York and Kentucky for this race. Included among those are the number three, Plum Ali, the number four, Crystal Cliffs, coming in for the Graham Motion and Christoph Clement Barnes. But the favorite on the morning line is the number two, Lady Spitespear, a locally based runner who has ventured south to the U.S. a few times in her past few starts. She actually began her career four for four, has lost her last five. We'll see if she takes the money in this race but plenty of others that could attract support like those two aforementioned runners from the U.S. The number eight are flash drive as well. And you've got that runner on the outside, Craig, the number 11, Dreaming of Drew, who should inject plenty of pace into this race. Yeah, I would think so. She's a horse who's shown plenty of speed sprinting. She stretches out, uh, gets back on the turf. She hasn't been on that in a while, been running on the synthetic. But I think she's going to uh, make the race more... A solid piece. Uh, we don't have to worry about Plum Ali going out there setting crazy slow fractions. Uh, I think we're going to get an honestly run race. And let's take a look at that time form U.S. pace projector, which depicts the number 11 dreaming of Drew on the front end of this race. And as Craig was saying, that's really no surprise. She is a filly that seems to do her best running from the front end. Craig, I think the big question, though, with dreaming of Drew, who we'll talk about now because we're not going to get to her past performances later, it's just... Is she a turf horse? Because her best races have come on synthetic. She was an impressive winner of the Bell Mahone last time, but she's concentrated on the Tapita surface recently. And no, but she's run okay on turf. As a two-year-old, she nearly won the Catch a Glimpse stake, just getting nosed out going six and a half at this Woodbine Court. So I do think her form is a little bit better. Here are some of the contenders, and we'll begin with one of those shippers into Woodbine, the number three plumber. We'll take a look at her when she won two back in the Plenty of Gray Stakes at Aqueduct. This was her race coming back, first time off a layoff, her four-year-old debut. And she ran pretty well to win this day, beating the heavy favorite, Technical Analysis. Uh, got a good trip in behind that one, saving ground, tipped out in the stretch, and she's able to get the job done, though she was beating just three rivals. Yeah, that wasn't the strongest field, but she did run a solid speed figure that day, a 118, something she had run at the end of her three-year-old season. So I think that does firmly make her a contender in here. I, I do think you have to have some concern about her last effort, though. Yeah, we're going to talk a little bit more about her last race in the bogey when we get to our flash drive. But you're right. She didn't back up that seasonal debut with her race second off the layoff last time. She might have had an excuse that day, but uh, now she's getting back into a spot where she's not going to have to make the pace. There was no speed signed on in that bogey, and she just kind of fell into position on the front end. Might be more comfortable coming from just off the pace, and she should be able to work out that kind of trip under Dylan Davis in this spot. The other horse that's coming in from the U.S. that could take some money is the number four, Crystal Cliffs, for Graham Motion. Let's, let's take a look at her when she won two back in the Sand Springs at Gulfstream Park. And, Craig, she beat a pretty decent runner this day in Stolen Holiday, who has since come back and won a stakes race at Monmouth Park. And Crystal Cliffs just inhales this field to go on to win nicely, came back out of this race, and was just second best in technical analysis. Yeah, no, uh, no problem with that. I mean, she ran fine last time out. She actually improved her speed figure in the Gallaret from a 113 to a 117. And it was not really a truly run race. She's a horse that likes to have a bit of a late kick and, and finish off the race. And she really got no pace to run into whatsoever. So she was at quite a tactical disadvantage on that day. Yeah, she's one who's going to appreciate a little bit of pace up ahead. Uh, she did sit a bit closer to the pace than she usually does last time, but that was because they were going so slowly on the front end. You could see Craig hi highlighted those blue color-coded pace figures in the time form USTP is just kind of indicating that she was a little bit against it in that spot. So she's one that would appreciate some pace developing up front. 
Another runner that's coming out of some recent races down south is the number eight, our flash drive. And we talked a little bit about Plum Ali's poor effort in the bogey. Let's take a look at the stretch run of that race because our flash drive actually ran pretty well that day. The heavy favorite here was Brugier, who wins pretty easily in the end. But our flash drive, she makes a good run to be second to that heavy favorite, running a career best speed figure for her. Yeah, I really liked what I saw for her. She's just been moving in the right direction. She's a uh, fairly lightly race four-year-old who is uh, improving her speed figures. And I liked the good tactical speed that she showed that day. She was able to take over, wasn't able to quite hold off Rougier, but she was able to hold off the rest. I'm going to get a little bit in the weeds here as somebody who very closely follows the Naira circuit and the way that the tracks are playing at different times. Uh, the inner turf, the rail has been set at nine feet at a couple of times this meet. And one of those was the week that the bogey was run on May 14th. And when the rail has been at that nine feet setting like it was for the bogey, it really seemed like you wanted to get outside three to four wide trips and you wanted to avoid being right down on the rail. And Plum Ali was on the rail in the bogey. Our flash drive was about three to four wide the entire way. I'm viewing that as maybe an explanation of the disparity in the results last time for these two. So I think they're a bit closer in ability than the last race would suggest. Uh, we'll see how they bet this race, the two of them. Our flash drive is a higher price on the morning line. Let's take a look at the horse that actually was pegged as the morning line favorite. That's the number two, Lady Spite Spear. And we'll check out her race two back when she was third in the grade one Jenny Wiley. But she was a pretty distant third in this race as she was no match for Rico Glory and Shantasara, a couple of runners from the Chad Brown barn. But Craig, I don't think too many Phillies could say that they could beat Regal Glory the form that she's in right now. No, it was kind of hard to pick out a race for her, but I actually think that's her best race this year, despite being beaten seven and three quarter lengths that day. She got a once 15 speed figure. She lost to Regal Gorey, who's probably the top horse in the division right now. And she did so after a pretty tough start. She had an awkward beginning, so maybe was a little farther back than what she usually likes to be. And I'm a little surprised she was pegged the morning line favor, but I do think she's a horse that you really do have to have an opinion about in here because she's the one coming out of the highest class races. Yeah, Lady Spite Spear is a horse that won the first four starts of her career going four for four. She's lost five since then, but she's stepped up to face some tougher rivals, been beaten by just a slew of the top runners in Chad Brown Barnes recently, Bleecker Street, Regal Glory, and Speak of the Devil last time. She did get off to a poor start in that Jenny Wiley, so perhaps that was an excuse. But Craig, it does seem like her form maybe hasn't gone on since she was a younger horse. She might be kind of on the downswing, whereas others seem to be in better form right now. So like you, I was a little surprised that she was pegged the morning line favorite. And if she is a short price, she's one that I kind of wanted to go a little bit against in this race. A horse that uh, I think some people might take a look at here based on her last turf race is the number seven Broadway Lady. Uh, she's, though, coming off a couple of synthetic efforts, and she seems like one of these runners that just doesn't really like the tapita surface and might be a lot better on the turf. Yeah, her last two were not very good at all. Uh, she had never tried it before. And they gave her a shot, I guess. Uh, both were in stakes races, but she didn't just seem to handle it. And any kind of return to form of what we saw in her turf races at the end of her four-year-old season will put her in the mix here. She had won a couple or one nice allowance race with a 117 speed figure, had run a nice second before that with a 107 and seemed to be moving in the right direction. So she's one to keep an eye on at a big price. Yeah, I do wonder how much that 117 time form US speed figure back last October was earned due to the fact that there was some give in the turf course that day. You see that six track condition rating in the time form US PPs next to the uh, good marker for the track condition. Maybe she's just a horse that likes some given the ground that day. We're probably not going to get that on Saturday at Woodbine. So we'll see if she's able to be competitive over a firmer turf course. Just one more horse that I wanted to take a look at that's going to be a much bigger price in this race is the number five, Lady War Machine. Uh, checking out her past performances. She's obviously coming in a little bit light on the speed figures, Craig, but she's raced on the turf twice. One of those was a pretty good effort, a three-leg victory when she was a three-year-old over Honey Pants, who was a decent Christophe Clement runner at that time. Got back on the turf last time coming off a layoff, but just seemed like the slow pace of that race and being mired inside behind horses didn't really agree with her. I'm not going to be surprised if she could take a step forward in her second start off the layoff. 
Yeah, that did seem like a bit of a prep race to me. You do have the concern she's never really won at this distance. Uh, most of her success has come in sprint races, but she's going to be a long price, so I can see why you would uh, give her a look. Yeah, distance is a question. I just like the visual impression that she made in that Alley Wow Stakes from last July. And we'll take a look at a formulator fact for her trainer, Josie Carroll, something that I found to be most appealing about this horse. Uh, over the past five years, second off a layoff of approximately four to eight months, 120 to 240 days, she's uh, winning at a rate that's approaching 30% with a healthy 260 ROI. So I just think that's a positive for a horse that's going to be a pretty big price in this race, Lady War Machine. Greg, let's throw up our picks for this race. I do have that long shot pegged third in here, but I'm going to go a little bit more logical than that with my top two picks. I just like the number three, Plum Ali. I thought her return from the layoff two back was good, and I could make that excuse for her with the way the track was playing last time that I'll put her on top. What I hope is a decent price in this race. She is, I believe, nine to two on the morning line, and I've got the logical Crystal Cliffs in second. You've got her in your super effect as well, but just went for that other horse coming out of the bouquet. Yeah, I just think our flash drive is going to offer a little bit more value. Uh, and I do like what I saw last race, uh, the rail notwithstanding. I still thought she ran pretty well in there. Uh, I have Lady Spite Spear pe pegged in second. I didn't really think she'd be the morning line favorite, but I do think she's going to run better than what we've seen with a return to her home track, maybe a little bit lesser competition, and just rounded it out with a couple of the more logical horses. Craig and I both taking horses out of the Bogey Stakes at Belmont in this grade two Nassau Stakes at Woodbine on Saturday. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.